Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and Marta again. Yes, If you have listened to us uh, during last week, you know that Anna, uh, she had a surgery and she could not join us this uh, wonderful, very rainy Friday to record the four episodes that we uh, record ahead of time. So this is You've Got Five Options, but this time with Marta only. Luckily, I'm not alone at the studio and we have our lovely technician. Thank you. Hi. (laughs) Yes, this is Lesse. And we also have a guest for you. And our guest's name is Basia. And uh, can you introduce yourself, Basia, a little bit? Of course. Hello, my name is Basia. I'm a psychologist and also a psychotherapist. And I'm very happy to be here and to talk with Marta about a real life challenge that we have yeah. prepared for you. Yeah, I'm so excited to have a real psychologist and a psychotherapist <laughs> with me today. So it's uh, fully professional. But the beautiful thing about having Basha here is that she can share with us not only the professional perspective, but actually also her everyday life experience. Because the challenge that we have today is how to keep yourself through a difficult time of starting your life from scratch. So we together have prepared five things that will help you survive starting your life from scratch when you're moving to a new country. Yeah, we are talking specifically about moving to a new country, but if some of you uh, will apply those advices to other situations, that will be great. Yeah, yeah, for example, I know a divorce or just moving to another city. So, Lesa, you will have your ears very open today, I'm yes. sure, yeah. because Lesa <laughs> is moving to a new country almost like next <gasps> month. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. next month. So uh, it will be very relevant for you. So and hopefully you will be better prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we can ask you every now and again uh What do you think about a tip that we give? But if any of you have been listening to us before, you know that Lesse is like a joker. So sometimes he can be very active on our shows, almost like a co-host, while other times we cannot get even another word than hello uh, and goodbye from him. So (laughs) (laughs) So it's just a surprise. It depends on the mood. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, you know. Okay, so before we go directly into the challenge, I would like to ask you a question, Basia, so that our listeners can get to know you a little bit better. Who did you want to become when you were a child? I think I wanted to become a singer and an actress, but that was before I knew that I cannot sing. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I think I wanted to perform somehow, but then I also got an idea about being a scientist or... Um, even a fireman, you know, different very ideas. Different. Yeah. Very different. Well, uh, I can share with you the opportunity to give you a microphone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> so you. So if you really want to sing. <laughs> I already feel great. <laughs> so, But um, let's keep it that way. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no singing. <laughs> no okay, singing. fine. Okay, thank you for sharing that. And now we will uh, move on to those five tips. I will just tell you what are those five tips and uh, then we will be digging into them one by one. So the first tip is keep an area that you love in your life. Tip number two is keep a positive mindset, but let yourself miss and grieve. Tip number three is make plans, including plan your day. Tip number four is take care of your network, the old one and the new one. And the tip number five, open up to opportunities. So this is, you've got five options. So uh, you're probably not surprised uh, that these are five tips. And uh, Basha and I, we had a brainstorming session so that we could come up with those um, with those tips together. And Basha had her wonderful insight and has been, whatever I was coming up uh, as a proposal, she was able to, you know, give it this additional depth 
and uh, another perspective. So that's always the beauty of brainstorming. You can create more when you have two brains working together. So let's dig into the first one. Keep an area that you love in your life. So, Basha, tell us a little bit about that tip. Yes, uh, I will start maybe with some background just to to let you know that um, I've been here for a year now. So first year of adaptation, first year of being in a new country. We came uh, to Denmark in August last year to my husband. uh, I came with my daughter, with our daughter. Uh, So everything was new, even way to the shop is new yeah you don't know anything you don't know any people you don't know any places and that's that's difficult because you use a lot of resources to gain the new information yeah we sometimes forget about how much resources it takes to for example go to you know a shop first you have to look on the map then find the way then maybe the shops are totally different so you just you you can't go shopping like in 10 minutes Yeah. And then suddenly you are tired after an usual day uh, doing just things you used to do. So that was surprising, uh, surprising for me that those little things that I usually did without thinking about them or making an effort, suddenly they were hard to do. And I also felt bad at doing them because, for example, I didn't know a way to the shop. That's crazy. Yeah. When you are like over 30 and you like you know, take care of your home and it's natural for you and then suddenly you don't know how to do it. So I think it's very important to keep something that you f- you feel good about. You don't have to be good at it, like or, or perfect in it. You don't have to uh, be working in it or just something that's important for you, something that you like, that is just yours. It can be just reading books uh, or something that you feel confident in. So it's very important to keep that area and remember to make time for it. Maybe not every day, maybe it's not possible to do it every day, but to have it like in the back of your head. Okay, that's my my area of expertise even. You know, if I'm great in baking, then I have to make some time for it, plan it for the weekend, for example. So tell us what are the benefits of doing that in your new life when you're moving uh, abroad? Yeah, I think that the, the most important benefit is that you feel efficient. Yeah, that you, you still have something that you are good at and that you enjoy doing and then gives you um, more resources. Yeah, because you have to remember that adapting to a new situation, and this is a real, real new situation, real uh something that is totally new and and demands a lot of resources. So if your resources are on minus, you won't be feeling good. So you have to make things that will help you to gain the resources. And that's one of the things, that you feel efficient, that you feel joy doing something. It can be even, you know, taking a walk. But I will encourage you to do something that you are that you know that you are good at you know not not just like taking a walk okay because i have to take a walk no if you are good at running run okay that sounds like a really really important and good tip will you share with us what was it for you what was that thing that you brought together with yourself from your previous life yeah that was actually the thing that we will also be talking later and that that is to to keep some connection to your old country but for me it was uh, working in the psychotherapy society that I do for free so it's not like giving me any (laughs) financial profits but for me it was important that I still do something that is important for other people and for me yes because I'm in a committee of uh, Polish association of psychotherapy a cognitive behavioral society and that was very important to keep it even though it doesn't help me professional in Denmark, but for me it was important to have that area of mine and to also keep some of my patients. Okay. That was important. Okay, so that you found uh, very helpful as one of the things. Yeah, you've shared with us that you have uh, moved to Denmark a year ago. Yes. So you are still in this adaptation period. Can you tell us a little bit how much this kind of period can take? How much, you know, adaptation, how much is a normal (laughs) period of adaptation? What should the newbies expect 
when it comes to... You should expect a year at least. At least. Yes, we usually say that uh, adaptation that takes a year, it's totally normal. Mm. You kind of have to go through a whole year, uh, four seasons, all new, um, all the months, yes? But... I also heard, I don't know if it's true, I, it's not like scientific uh, knowledge, okay, so remember that. I've heard that moving to another country uh, demands more time and you should also star start counting after you get the job, the job you would like to have. So you don't start counting from the moment you set your foot in a new country or a new place or a new city, but from the moment when you are settled professionally. Hmm. And I mean, that that of course requires to people who are used to working and who worked in their home country. Yes, I'm not talking about someone like a student. So that can actually take a longer time for a person who doesn't start to work immediately after coming uh, to a new country. So we have to remember that, that we always have to think individually. Of course, in general, in the books, it's a year. Mm. But remember that it can, it depends. For example, we moved also during our stay in Denmark. So uh, first we came to uh, Aarhus and then we moved to Honslet. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't adapt to Aarhus knowing that we are going to move. Mm -hmm. So I don't count those <laughs> months. Yes, because uh, I knew that that's, that's not going to be the place we are going to stay in. Okay, but in general, those of you guys who have moved to a new country and you have been uh, there for six months and you are feeling still, yeah. still like hell, that's uh, I'm not near feeling at home. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that's completely normal. Mm. I have moved to Denmark already 10 years ago. Wow. So I uh, definitely have had my adaptation, but I would say that my adaptation has taken more than a year. Mm. Of course, after a year, I could, uh, I knew how to do things around, mm. right? But I think you are right about about this adaptation probably took a year from the time I got the job that I wanted to get. And I would say this is, of course, something we will discuss later on when it comes to social network and building like real Definitely. friendships. That takes time. So, guys, be patient with this process. Exactly. Be good to yourself and take this uh, tip as bring something that you have loved in your previous life, bring it together with you so that you can, I loved how you said it, Basha, so that all these new things, they take so much of your capacity yeah. that you can run on minus with your yeah. energy. If you bring something that you are effective and efficient in, you can fill up your energy cup so yeah, that you can exactly. deal with all those new things. So, And that's very important what you said about being patient and being gentle to yourself, because if you start to putting pressure on yourself like why am I not feeling okay it's been six months what is it something wrong with me there are many people coming for psychological advice just because of that is is it normal am I normal is it not weird that I'm still crying and I'm still missing my friends of course it's normal it's such a relief to hear it for some people because you know also uh, so, um, social pressure is big you know everybody's asking how are you doing and you know they don't want to talk about sad stuff so you're telling the bright side of the story and then, but inside, you feel bad and then you start to think, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. It's not. So thank you for that. And you have already made this uh, very nice opening for the tip number two, because uh, the tip number two is keep a positive mindset, but let yourself miss and grieve. So, of course, I came up with keep your positive <laughs> mindset. And then Basha was like, yeah, yeah, but it's really important to allow uh, the time to actually grieve because you are leaving your life behind. You are leaving your network behind. So thank you for that. And uh, let's explore it a little bit. Tell us why it's so important to allow yourself to grieve. I think that especially nowadays, it's really important to remind ourselves about keeping a lot of space for our emotions, negative emotions, because it's a really big pressure in society, uh, in television and around among people to be positive. And people start to feel bad because they don't feel happy or, you know, they, they start to have expectation that they should be happy all the time. And that's, that also causes the pressure, which follows to feeling bad about yourself. To feeling guilty, for example, you know, that I, I don't cope as well as I should or as the others who are showing their pictures on Facebook. But then when you start to talk to people, 
you suddenly hear stories about, oh, I cried every day after I came to Denmark. Yeah. So and that's for me as a psychologist that it's so important because you have to let those feelings out. Otherwise, they will stay inside and harm you. So it's very important to realize that it is a loss. Of course, you you also gain something because, for example, I don't know, you come to Denmark to be with your husband or you come to Denmark to have a new job, better job or better life situation. Of course, it's the pluses that you came for. But you have to remember and give yourself time to grieve, to remember that there are a lot of things, important things that you left. Your family, friends that you have been seeing your whole life, that you feel close to, that were your support. And of course, we can talk to each other and so on, but still, they are not here with you. Your home, your familiarity feeling, yeah, that everything is familiar, that you know those streets, the weather, the food. Yes, that's something that we also miss, having this everyday life. So the language, and it's sometimes easy to forget that on every day when you struggle with, you know, a new life, to forget that, okay, it's, it's like we said in the previous uh, tip, it's okay to feel bad. You are missing something or somebody. So tell me, uh, Basha, if there are different people, right? And there will be yes. those people who will be more inclined to be naturally positive. They have this more mm-hmm. optimistic uh, mm-hmm. outlook to life. And you, we have just given them a nice tip, you know, it's yeah. okay to cry here and there, but they will probably, because of their mindset, they will be able to keep themselves out, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. pull mm-hmm. themselves out of grief and feeling sad. But there are those people who might go into that a little bit, you know, maybe not too deep because maybe it's never too deep, but maybe they will struggle with getting uh, yes. themselves out Up of uh, mm-hmm. this grief. Do you have any advice to those people who who maybe can get a bit too dark? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that... Um, It's very important to remember to be conscious about what helps you. And we naturally forget it when we are feeling bad. That's mm. hap- that happens to everybody. That when we are feeling down, it seems like, oh, I will be feeling like that forever. And I was a failure before and I will be a failure here. And we start to get into the dep- depressive um, circle. So uh, my first tip, but you have to remember that it's very like self-help thing. It doesn't have to be enough. So, of course, I, I encourage, if, if it goes too bad, I encourage everybody to get professional help. But you can start with writing the things that you that helped you before. So if you start to get like really low and thinking, you know, have all the black thoughts and feelings that, you know, everything sucks hmm. and everything is bad and I'm so bad at this and this and I did this wrong and this wrong, then you have to think, okay, This is not facts. This is just my thoughts. That's like a cognitive behavioral technique to do. It's like one of the first things that we learn our clients or patients, uh, that you sit down and you start to write those thoughts down and uh, see, that, okay, this is, this is my thoughts. This is not facts. Mm. And you can start to redefine them. And you do it not by writing a positive list, but more, for example, looking at your past. You can ask your friends to help you with this. Okay, what are my resources? What helped me before? And somebody will tell you, for example, that you're good with uh, talking to people about your problems. And then you say, okay, so maybe that's why I feel sad because I sit at home alone and I start to have all those thoughts. So maybe it's enough that I call somebody. Yeah, you have to break the circle. So first you can do a list because we forget about the resources when we are down. Mm. So you will have the list for the next time you feel Mm. down. Yeah, and then try to do one of the things from your list. Yeah, for example, okay, what helped me before? When I was more physically active. Am I physically active now? No. So maybe I will start with a walk for 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be, you know, going to swimming every second day. To break the circle, to break the pattern of feeling bad and being just stuck in your thoughts. Okay, I think that's a really good tip. And it's actually quite cool. I am a coach and yeah. I can see that I'm using psychological <laughs> tools uh, in uh, coaching. So that's really great to hear that it's actually a, a similar uh, mechanism that is used. So that was also a very nice learning for me personally. <laughs> Thank you. But I am thinking, uh, what is the positive mindset for you? 
So taking under consideration that taking mm. care of your emotions is important and grieving is an important part of finding yourself in a new country. But what would be a positive mindset for you? Positive mindset for me is rational mindset. So it's not saying everything is going to be okay. It's more it can be okay. So if I'm thinking it's going to be bad, that's not true. It's for sure going to be wonderful. That's also not true. But it can go better. That's the truth. Because it can. Mm. Yeah, we, we are adding maybe just one word, but it changes your mindset, your attitude. So that's what we are going for. For me, when I, I, um, I don't give advices about positive thinking, because like I said, it can harm you because it puts a pressure on you. And it can also lead to some disappointment. So I'm more for rational thinking mm -hmm. and problem solving orientation. Yeah, because when you think, okay, it can be better. And what can I do? Or how can I get help to make it better? So that would be positive mindset for, for me to, to think uh, about the problem in a way of solving it. I really love this approach. And yet again, <laughs> here there is a big link between uh, yeah. what uh, we are thought in coaching. So it's uh, it's great to hear that. Of course, we have to remember because it's also my I'm obsessed with the psychological yeah. <laughs> angle that remember that we are talking about people without bigger problems. Yes. Like we are not talking about people who have been diagnosed with depression or personality disorder or some other ser severe disorders like eating disorder or something like that okay so let's not forget we are talking about people with adaptations problems and like you and me yeah, yeah. But like healthy people and when you feel that none of our tip is helping you or that it's getting worse professional help is needed Yeah, I'm very thanks. strict on uh, that. Yeah. Thank you for uh, stressing this because it is very important. Mm. It is very important to know that in this radio we are just discussing consideration and it's more like an inspiration exactly. uh, that we are doing mm. here. It's not a professional help that we are providing here. So it's very important if you are getting too dark or if you have previously had some uh, exactly. some deeper mm. issues that mm. it's important that you actually seek for professional help. So thank you for uh, bringing it up uh, here. Can you share with us a little bit uh, your own story? How has it been for you throughout this year when it comes to grieving and keeping this rational mindset? Well, it's been difficult for me too. So even having the theory, it's not, it's not easy. Luckily, or maybe not, I've been visiting my country uh, very often because I'm linked to it professionally. Uh, so... In a way, it helped me, but also in a way, it also kept me a little away from Denmark and, and being here and, you know, trying to, to adapt more. But it came uh, with in waves. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I have a good, like a really good period and I'm thinking like, okay, this is going fine, you know, moving forward. And, and suddenly then I have like a little breakdown and like, oh, I'm feeling bad again. <laughs> So that we, I think it's important also to remember that, yeah, that to allow yourself to have those waves of sadness or feeling worse. But it also helped me that uh, my daughter is going to school here. So I got like a natural way in, yeah, because I got to know other mothers at school and uh, I helped her. I helped her um, adapting to school situation. So that kept me busy at the beginning, busy enough. Mm. But then I also had to have my time of grieving and it came actually a few months after I'd been here. So that was maybe a surprise for me. But psychologically, it's not a surprise yeah, that it started to be worse after Christmas um, in January. So it came in August and, you know, people were also expecting, okay, so it's been a couple of months, you are doing fine. And then I'm start, I started to do worse. Mm. So uh, that was a hard time, like a hard before spring came. Mm. That was like, yeah, I had my, my months of, of doing not good at all. And how did you manage to get yourself out of that not feeling good at all? Well, I was being, actually, I was going through my therapy, my own therapy, but that was not connected to it. It was just, it started before. So I had the support of my uh, psychotherapist, but also from all my friends. I was calling them a lot and talking a lot. And that was really supportive that they were telling me that's okay, that you are feeling this way. And yeah, they were showing me my resources that I totally forgot about. So that was that was my, my way. And also physical, uh, to being physically active 
I started to go on dance lessons. And also, I think what saved me, that I started to go to Lardansk, mm. starting a language course, which gave me what we are going to talk about later. It organized my day. Okay. Great. Thank you for sharing those a lot. And we will soon finish this part of the episode. We, w- we are doing this in two episodes. So before we finish, I wanted to ask Lesse, have you been inspired by those tips that yeah, Basia shared with definitely. us? Yeah, definitely. I'm just listening, soaking it in, <laughs> <laughs> trying so to get as much Do you know which part of you, what you love doing, uh, you're going to bring with you to Amsterdam? Uh, I definitely like photography and just walking, to be honest. <laughs> Being outside is important for me to take a walk if uh, things become too much, you know. Yeah. You can mix those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very easy to do that, Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> luckily. Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, That's so uh, you already know what you can bring with yourself to yeah. keep this part where a you... A camera. A camera, <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Exactly. You can bring a camera. Okay, and when it comes to the second tip, the keeping the rational mindset, sometimes we can call it positive, but we don't mean it in a way that yeah. you are neglecting exactly. <laughs> your feelings and just trying to be positive because everyone should be positive. But, you know, this more rational mindset and uh, allowing yourself to miss and grieve... Mm. Have you been inspired uh, by any of the considerations we have had here? It sounds very, uh, you know, uh, like, yeah, rational is not the word, but I don't know, like, yeah, like sound advice, uh, Mm -hmm. because you can't ignore the way you feel. Uh, So, But believe me, a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I tried Mm -hmm. that for some years, Mm -hmm. not uh, knowing that was what I was doing. It didn't work out. (laughs) (laughs) So would it be a good idea to prepare this kind of list in advance of your resources? Of course. I think it's even better. It works better when you uh, prepare it when you are feeling good, because then Mm -hmm. you get all the ideas and ask your friends to write it down. Because to have it like black and white, it's totally different than have it in your head. You you have to have it in writing. Uh, That's also a tip. Uh, so actually, when you are feeling good, it's better to write it then. Yeah, we are always much more kind with ourselves, yeah. right? When <laughs> yeah, exactly. When we are feeling positive. And it's just also when you are feeling very down, it's difficult to even bother to do that and then to be open. <laughs> it's even impossible the way our brain works. It can be because then you have a tendency to remember all the bad things. It's just our the way our brain works. So don't even expect of yourself to be able to do it. Mm. So that's why we, we sometimes need help from others because we literally cannot do it ourselves then. So all you guys, if you are going to move abroad or if you are going to start a new life in any way before you get dark, <laughs> <laughs> get your a list of resources, like the actual facts, the actual yeah. things, the actual experiences from the past the things that you can use in your new situation. And if you already have gone dark, then ask your friends. Yes. Because your uh, self, you might absolutely not be capable (laughs) of doing that. But your friends, your family, they know it. They still see you as you are. Yeah. So that's definitely a great uh, tip. Thank you so much for today, Basha. Thank you. And we will hope that our listeners will also listen to us in the second episode. Mm. Bye. 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 You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.